Hey everybody and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another lead guitar tutorial. In today's session, we're going to be continuing our study of Father and Son by Cat Stevens. In my previous lesson, I showed you all the rhythm guitar parts for that tune. Now in this session, I'm going to be showing you how to solo over the tune's instrumental section. We're going to be using the G major scale in C position, and I'm going to try my best to reveal little bits of theory as we go and some tips for just becoming a better soloist. I got the tabs available for you at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Support the channel there for just a buck a month and gain access to tons of extra resources, including tabs for all my popular lessons. Now, now, let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with my approach to soloing over top of Cat Stevens' Father and Son. I'm in standard tuning and in the key of G major. Now, before we get started learning my solo, there's one tip that I want to impart on you, which I feel might help you to become better soloist in the long run. And that tip is to start looking for the main melody line, what the vocalist was performing within a single scale position, uh, so that way you can start to feature notes from that melody line and then embellish from it. This is a technique that's used by almost every high caliber soloist. Okay, so let's begin by learning the scale in which I drew 90% of my notes from. I was performing using the G major scale, primarily in C position. So here I am using my caged system. This is a concept that allows me to find all the different positions of a given chord shape across the fretboard and also reveals different positions of a scale that surrounds those chord shapes. So here I am playing a C shape, but it's in the key of G because the root note is the 10th fret of the A string, the G note. And surrounding that chord shape, I have the G major scale. Okay, so let's get that scale position down. The pinky on the 10th fret of the A string playing the root note G. A whole step up to A on the D string 7th fret. Two frets up or a whole step up to B. And a half step up to C with the pinky. So far you have. All right, next I'm gonna go to the D note on the 7th fret of the G string whole step up to E. Then I'm going to the B string, seventh fret for F sharp. And then one half step gets me to my octave, the G note on the eighth fret of the B string. Practice that a few times. All right, going through that major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, because the B string's tuned differently than the rest of the strings. And a half step, gets me back to the root. Okay, now that I have that single octave, I can actually go into the next octave and play all the way up to the high E string, 15th fret to complete another octave of the scale. So we have that G note on the eighth fret again, going up to A on the 10th fret, B on the seventh, C on the eighth, D on the 10th, E on the 12th, F sharp on the 14th, and G again on the 15th fret of the high E string. Okay, so there it is, the G major scale in two octaves, everything that I'm using to create this solo. All right, so everything I just discussed reveals a lot about my mindset when I'm creating a solo. Considering the key, key of G major, okay, so it's a major key, so I gotta find different positions of my G major scale. That C position, which I personally learned uh, by uh, learning George Harrison solo to Till There Was You, um, is perfect for jamming over top of these types of tunes. It's a very comfortable position. Once I'm good at it, I can start to look for uh, notes that are inside that vocal melody. All 
All right, and then from there I can start to embellish to start coming up uh, with a unique and very interesting take on that melody line. Okay, excellent work everybody. You have a little bit of the theory down now. You'll be able to understand the licks that I'm throwing at you a lot better. We're getting started with the actual solo now, uh, starting with line number one, following along using your tablature at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Highly recommend that you all become members there. It's just a buck and you get tons of extra resources for all my lessons. So getting started with line number one, we're playing over the progression G major, B minor, C major, A minor. And over those changes I played. All right, and that'll get me back to the G chord. All right, let's break that down. Okay, so that began coming in after the second beat of G major. I slid from 10 up to 12 on the high E, then vibrato the 10th fret. At this point, the B minor chord has come in. We need to do a walk up to the D note 10th fret. Seven, eight, 10 as the C chord comes in. So far you have. Tap that note two more times, and slide up to 12. Then go to the B string, eighth fret, for just a short vibrato there. Now you have. Okay, then to finish up this measure, we're gonna play eight, 10, getting into the next measure as the G chord comes in, seventh fret, high E string, which, no coincidence, is a part of that G major chord in either D or C position. So that's why it's gonna sound so good. Musicians that are very good soloists, they're always using their ear first, but everything they play can be explained using theory. Okay, the next uh, couple of measures are we gonna be played over at the chord progression G, E minor, A minor, and then D major where I'll throw in a nice flourish. Okay, that's gonna get us to the first measure of line number two. Over those changes I played, starting from where we left off. Okay, let's break that down. Okay, so begin from where we left off, that seventh fret high E string, played over top of the G chord. Next, I'm going to play to get to the chord E minor. So seven, B string 10, eight, 10, and then that B note again over E minor. All right, easy to see how that's inside the chord. All right, then we're going to play eight, seven, and then usher in the A minor chord by going up to an A note on the B string. Okay, no coincidence, right? All right, so far you have there, Next, we're gonna play G string nine, eight, and then moving into line number two on your tab, the D major chord comes in for this nice descending flourish. Okay, so that phrase once again, over D major. Real slow. That was the seventh fret B string. Eight, pull into seven. G string nine. Seven on the B. Back to nine on the G. Seven on the G. Nine on the D. 10. And then, to get to the next measure, back to G major chord, we have the seventh fret vibrato in on the G string. Okay, let's play everything we have so far in this solo. One, Two, three, and four, and one, and two. Okay, great work, everybody. You're almost halfway through the solo. Now that we're back to the G chord, progression number one is going to repeat itself. So we're gonna have G major, B minor, C major, 
A minor. Over this repetition of that progression, I'm once again grabbing from the main melody line, but this time an octave lower. I'm gonna play. Okay, so that's how we're gonna finish up line number two. I think Otis wants to say hi to everybody. What's up, pup? Okay, so that is the uh, seventh fret of the G string. That's where we're gonna begin that melody line again as the G chord comes back in. Then the B minor chord's gonna come in as we play nine, 10, seven, D string to the G string. Repeat that again. And then tap that seventh fret G string three times as the C chord comes in. B minor, C, A minor. So here's how we're getting to the A minor chord. We're gonna hammer from seven up to nine, and then go to the fifth fret of the D string, departing from that scale position just for a moment. All right, then we're gonna play five, seven on the D string, and then go up to the ninth fret to the next measure for the G major chord. Okay, you put all that together, we have, starting from the G major chord, B minor, C, A minor, G major. All right, then to finish up that measure, after we get back to the ninth fret, we're gonna play. So that's seven, A string 10, seven, and then up to nine on the D string to get to the chord E minor. I always find it helpful to hum over the changes after I've learned a couple of lines. So. And that's where we've left off. Okay, congrats everybody, you have completed lines one and two of this solo. I'm gonna play everything you've learned so far. One, two, three, four, G. Okay, now we're ready to wrap things up with line number three. Okay, so we just left off on a G to E minor change playing. Those two chords, G and E minor, are part of a variated version of progression number two. So the final chord progression is going to be G, E minor, and D, and G, and G, and D, and C, and G. Okay, so that's how we're gonna wrap up the instrumental section. Okay, so you already had the lick for the G to E minor change, that was. Then moving into line number three, I'm gonna play. To finish up the solo. Okay, so coming out of where we left off. As the E minor chord finishes up, we're going to slide up to 10, back to nine, hammer as the D major chord comes in. That was hammering seven to nine, back to seven, then to five. That's all on the D string. Then the G major chord's gonna come in real quick, and I'm gonna slide up into a G major chord in D position, one of the real classic tricks that a lot of soloists employ. So all of that starting from the end of line number two. Line number three. All right, and so these three notes are part of the G major chord and that's why those work so well. Next we need to go up to the D chord. Slide in, B string, 10 to 12. 10th fret of the high E string, vibrato. 12th fret B. And then that walks us up to the C major chord. All right, here we are on the uh, 13th fret of the B string, and that's the 12th fret of the high E string, where if I play a D shape, 
I have a little tiny piece of my, let's see if I can do this. Nope, C major chord, an octave up. Okay, so um, from there, once you've gotten up to there, we're gonna just walk down using some harmonies. Very, very cool. We're going to play uh, C major, 13 and 12. All right, then we're gonna play 12 and 10, and then get to the G major chord using that D shape idea again. Eight and seven. Alternatively, I could play this. That's the uh, 12th frets of the G and B string that works as well. Okay, let's play everything that you just picked up, starting again from the end of line number two. Going for that alternative. Okay, great work everybody. You've made it through the entire solo. Now it's just practice, 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 section by section, getting it one step at a time. Uh, when you're ready, you can jam along with this full demonstration going all the way through the solo at a kind of medium to slow tempo. One, two, three, four, G. Thanks so much for checking out this lead guitar lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. I want to thank my patrons. You're making all these lessons possible. I hope you're enjoying your extra resources. I've got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe. Please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.